There are actually two things that I have by my bed when I go to sleep every night. One of them is my Colt LE6940 M4 carbine, and the other is my German Shepherd. And this thing's on the wall. I'm Riveru Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. However, this would be my choice for an SHTF scenario for sure. This is a Zostava ZPAP M70 AK-47. Okay, and you know, this is a workhorse. It's battle proven. Um, it's so dependable, so reliable. Uh, you can just put it through anything and it'll still fire. It has a lot of features on it that are just simple. Um, and you know, it's just a great design and I think it's a perfect all-around SHTF rifle. And if someone was to ask me if I could only have one choice, one gun for an SHTF scenario, I would choose this gun right here, all right? But anyway, it's very easy to take apart and clean, and it's got a 1.5 millimeter receiver on it, which gives it really good strength to hold up. Um, it has a bolt open catch here. It uses the same thing as the safety uh, lever here. Um, it has a mag release right here where you just push it forward and it comes out in your hand. There's no, no reason to drop it on the ground. Now, it does have the uh, sight adjustment in meters. So, in meters are pretty easy to convert over to yards. Um, but right now it's in. Um, Right now it's set at P, and P just stands for battle ready. But anyway, this is good for anywhere from 25 yards all the way up to 300 meters if you leave it sit there. Then shooting past 300 meters, you could experiment around and, and try the other settings on it. But that's, that's pretty much where I leave the gun. It does have a side rail on here if you want to mount a red dot. Um, I don't think I would recommend putting a rifle scope on this gun. It's not really necessary since it is a uh, battle uh, rifle and not a sniper rifle. So I would, I would definitely though mount a red dot for sure. That would be uh, beneficial for a, a battle rifle. Today we're um, here at the 50 yard range and uh, I thought we would do some target shooting with it and uh, you know, I'm going to put it in the lead sled and mostly the reason for the lead sled is to see how accurate the barrel is. Um, and this, this is set up to where it's not going to move that much either, but um, I'd rather concentrate on how, how nice and, and sharp this um, barrel is. And it is chrome-lined, so they did do that for us. And, you know, and, and some people think that if it's a chrome-lined barrel, it's not going to be as accurate, but that's not necessarily true. The chrome-lined barrels are just as accurate as the ones that were made previously before. So I wouldn't believe that. I've never had any accuracy problems with a chrome line barrel for sure. And it's gonna hold up a lot better. So the benefits outweigh the accuracy thing for sure. Um, so anyway, um, we're set up here with a 20 round mag here. And this takes uh, 762 by 39. And now any mags that you have um, will fit this gun. So, you know, when I was a youngster, I had to have an AK-47. Just, just had to have one. So I went out and bought one for $200, a Romanian Wasar. And it came with a couple clips, and those clips fit this gun. It's just amazing. Um, but this is a workhorse. This, is, uh, this was designed by Kalishnikov, and, and he designed a... a near perfect rifle for sure um, that you can always depend on and you know um, I give the edge to this gun over the LE 6940 in an SHTF scenario uh, the Colt LE 6940 I'm not throwing it under the bus by any means because that's a great urban combat fighting gun um, this gun is has a little bit of an edge because, you know, the extreme abuse that this gun can take, 
I don't think the LE 6940 could take the abuse that this gun can. So, you know, that's why I include it in my SHTF scenario arsenal. Now, it does have a four pound trigger on it. Very nice, crisp trigger. I don't have an issue with it. Um, so, you know, it's very smooth. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, there's not that much recoil really to worry about. So, it does have a nice wood furniture here mixed with the other uh, parts on the gun. It kind of sets it apart, I think. I kind of like it like that. The only thing that I would put on it would be a uh, would be a red dot, and I mount as far forward as possible so I have that quick acquisition that you need by leaving both eyes open and everything. So, well, I think we should get uh, set up here. Uh, I have the GoPro with me and some targets, and uh, we're going to fire at 50 yards. So let's uh, let's get started. So there's a couple things I didn't go over um, in the intro. One of them is its effective range, and that would be. 300 meters okay uh, but and also you know I didn't really talk about why I wouldn't put a rifle scope on I didn't talk about it that much but um, a rifle scope you're going to have magnification with and for a combat close-in combat gun like this um, you're going to have to close one eye so a red dot doesn't have any magnification Therefore, you're going to be able to leave both eyes open. I, I've never been used to leaving both eyes open with a rifle scope, you know, that has magnification. Uh, I've always had to close my left eye. But with a red dot scope, I can leave both eyes open. And for a combat gun, that's what you want. So, um, all right, so I got five in this uh, clip here, and this is a 20 round clip. Okay, we're set to go here. We'll put on the muffs. And we're shooting here at uh, 50 yards. And let's strap down here. Okay, upper target. See how we do here. Okay, now, that's safe right there, and then this is fire. All right, but keep your fingers outside the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. And we got the GoPro down there. So I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put the bullseye right on top of my front sight, and we're shooting at the upper target. Here we go. The trigger feels lighter than four pounds. Let's put it on safe. That almost feels like a two pound trigger. The elevation isn't too bad. I just shot over to the right a little bit, but let's fire these other ones here. Okay, so the elevation was just a little high. We're going to lower it just a little bit more. And Take it out of safe mode. Here we go. Let's check that. Let's put it in safe. Yeah, I s definitely see now that I probably need a smaller stool, a shorter stool anyway. But now I'm going to put the I'm going to put the front sight right on the bottom of that black target there on the top. They're shooting slightly to the right too. Okay, here we go. C. 
sight is right on the bottom of the black target up there at the top. So to get these uh, bullseyes here, I have one in the bullseye here. In order to get that, I was aiming right down here. But these up here, I was putting the bullseye right on top of my front sight and I shot these. So it shoots, there's a bullet rise 50 yards, the way that's set up on P. Um, but anyway, when I brought it down to here, the elevation was good. So it just, it just needs a lot of practice. It just takes practice, um, you know, with these iron sights, and that's not bad. Uh, it took me at least six or seven shots before I got the practice to where I know where the rifle shoots. And that's what I've said in all my videos. You have to know where your gun shoots. And so now I know... Uh, when I come back and do another video with the AK-47, now I know where it shoots and we can spend more time with the adjustments and everything. But I appreciate you watching. Make sure you leave me a comment and let me know if you have an AK-47, what your experience is. Um, at 50 yards or 300 meters or whatever, um, I'd enjoy hearing from you. But hit that subscribe button for me. Hit the like button if I helped you out. And most important, share it with your friends, all right? Thanks for joining me, and thanks for watching.